PIDP 3100 Foundation of Adult Education. I feel the objectives were learning about communication skills, uh, how I can take uh, what I what I know and how to communicate it better towards students so that they can uh, interpret it for themselves. Creating positive learning environments, making a safe space where learning can flourish and people can bring their own ideas uh, into our environment. Uh, reflective practices. I can take uh, either what I've done and see how I can make it better. Uh, I can reflect on what I've learned and figure out how to uh, teach it. I learned a lot about cognitive research as well within this course. So looking at different uh, learning theory, theories and, and research around learning uh, really opened up my eyes to see how I learn and how others learn so I could find the best ways to teach and get that information across. Interpretive, uh, the insights that I got from this, this, this course as well as uh, how my thinking has changed by reflecting on these ideas. Uh, for me, this was a big glimpse into the way I approach education and teaching. It introduced me to the importance of experience and meaning and how students learn. The idea that people have to learn how to learn first and how they learn to make information purposeful and shape their learning. Uh, some of the theories that really resonated with me were Bezerra's transformative theory, that was really eye-opening, where students experience and then reflection on experience uh, gets a generalization that they then use uh, for application going forward. And the idea of constructivism, I think, was, was one of the main theories that I got uh, that really kind of helped me think about my own personal philosophy of teaching. Uh, the idea that we base learning on what we know and using it as a foundation, then to take these new ideas and work it into our world to create our future and grow it is a great way to think about our like the trade that I work in, uh, especially as a cook. It really helped me treat students as individuals. Uh, I'm not instructing every student for the same future, so each student has different goals and paths that I needed to address and these and then guide them to, to their best future. There's a lot of different uh, career paths that students can take and the information I, I give them, uh, some may seem more important to other students. I like to see my class as a stepping stone for, for students to grow, find direction, um, make networks that have uh, moments that will change and shape their futures. And then as well through my experience I can help students uh, challenge their reality and expectations putting them ahead of their competition in the industry. Uh, a lot of uh, importance of soft skills too, like the ability to communicate, and be social, positive attitudes as well as uh, social and emotional intelligence are, are things that I thought but didn't realize and how important they are to uh, the success of my students going forward. Uh, I've, I've taught them before but I didn't really uh, stop to, to realize that I was maybe doing it or how important it is as a stepping stone for them uh, in the future for what they do. Interpretive, uh, to me I feel the classrooms today need flexibility. To get the best out of learners, students, students, learners, classrooms, cohorts, variety of, of opportunities, I need to create these that I can choose to, to let flourish and grow. So I may have a sit and straight lesson plan that, that I want to work off, but students can create different pathways where, the, where that lesson plan can go. And I've noticed different cohorts, different, different students, uh, different classrooms, uh, I, can, I can teach the same lesson and get different outcomes or, or students can bring questions or relative experience that they have that can build upon the lesson and ultimately change the way that, that I maybe teach the lesson in the future. And creating a safe space for students to ask those questions and take me off that, that path uh, will help me find ways of teaching that will make the information more relevant and valuable. I need to be open 
uh, to the knowledge that is around and that the students bring. Decisional. This new enhanced interpretation, I think that I'm going to use uh, what I learned from the 3100 course in my professional practice. Uh, by I want to I want to create learners that are not satisfied with what they know and continue to seek knowledge. I feel I can do this by being passionate about my own approach to learning and teaching. A lot of the valuable lessons that I learned while taking this PIDP course, I can help uh, to use those to help the way I teach. Uh, a big quote that that resonated with me out of the, the textbook, the adult learning thinking, linking theory and practice, uh, was we may think of ourselves as thinking creatures that feel, but biologically, we are feeling creatures that think. PIDP 3210, uh, Curriculum Development. The objectives of this course uh, were introducing me to theories and approaches on curriculum development. Uh, I was introduced to curriculum terminology that I had not understood before. I learned new theories and models of, of curriculum development. Uh, I was introduced to them a little bit when I took the instructional skills workshop previous, uh, but, but I didn't have a lot of, of uh, knowledge or time working with them. Competency-based and outcome-based approaches uh, for goals, objectives, and course mapping uh, when developing curriculum. Uh, my first time really breaking down course outlines and a syllabus at this level. Designed and developed curriculum documents uh, that helped me in my classroom. I'm still using them today. And a big point was, was alignment. It was a big eye-opener for me. So seeing the connection between uh, course outcomes and goals uh, with my delivery of instruction and how it impacted my assessments and evaluation of, of learning. Uh, reflecting back, I had done some lesson planning in the past teaching for the city of Kamloops or doing substitute or TA at the university, uh, but never approached my lesson plans in, in this much detail or saw how, how it was done. There was a lot of, of great uh, uh, tools that were, were shown to me within this course. I didn't realize how to best put my emphasis on important skills and ideas that I was teaching, so mapping them out to make sure that the emphasis was on what what was important. I learned about studio schools, that was really interesting to me, uh, and how learning by doing is my strongest way of absorbing information, kind of a monkey see, monkey do type of, of learning. That's kind of how I, I felt uh, I got to the place I did in, in school, uh, or even in the work industry, watching what the person ahead of me was doing, saying I could do that, and then learning it. It's really important in, in how how our industry works it is is the practical side of things. Uh, the majority of the information I teach is practical. It's, it's easy to engage with students. Uh, what I have trouble with is uh, working harder on creating lessons to teach the theory part uh, of the curriculum that is just as engaging. All the students want to get into the kitchen but sitting around talking about theories and cooking and and that, that type of skills is more difficult. So finding ways to, to map those out to make sure that I get the important part of it dealt with and then we can get into the practical side. Interpretive, uh, I really enjoyed looking at lesson planning worksheets and breaking down a class into card. And this really helped me pull out the ideas I was instructing and making sure that the emphasis was on the right points. By doing this, it really made my classes flow better, I have stronger impacts by rounding them out nicely. Uh, the days now have a lot better structure, and the students are understanding the key points better, and I can see through uh, their understanding. Decisional, I think going forward, I have uh, I've developed a lot of great templates that I can use when I approach a lesson. I can use them as a foundation for a class and build upon them uh, with the changing curriculum or even just with my continued knowledge so the better understanding that I have some of the topics I can just take those lesson plans that I have and just adjust them uh, with my own growth in, within the subject. 
Uh, I'm able to look at a course and classes that I teach and figure out the purpose and the needs that I am teaching a lot better uh, and a lot clearer. I'm almost looking backwards at the skills that I'm teaching. I kind of like to see what what are the outcomes? What are, what are they going to get? And then finding better ways to getting the students uh, confident with that information. So going through the card, looking at the outcome, looking at the course outlines and the lesson plans, uh, developing them in a way that will get better engagement or, or will flow better or students will, will understand without maybe a lot less uh, it's a dilution. Right? So the, the tools I create in the PID P3210 course are really going to help me with my foundation as an instructor and uh, help me to get better every day. PIDP 3220, uh, Delivery of Instruction. The objectives here. So this, this course, I ended up taking it as the Instructional Skills Workshop at uh, TRU. Uh, this helped to help me develop new teaching skills. Uh, it enhanced existing skills, implemented new challenging ideas and technologies. I learned uh, like Kahoot in this class. That was a cool technology on teaching. This is the first time I used BOPS for lesson planning. I explored some engagement techniques and icebreakers, and also got into Bloom's taxonomy of learning domains. That was the first time I'd seen that as well. Reflecting on this course, this was a great opportunity to create 10 minute lessons and work alongside other instructors to see their teaching styles. That's one of the, the things the other instructors told me that they enjoyed when they were taking this class is seeing how others teach and their approach to, to teaching, their philosophies, and some of the skills that, that we can learn from them or from each other. I learned to use the, the BOPS approach to plan a lesson, how to better manage my time to achieve my lessons, uh, how to present and illustrate content uh, concisely in simple terms and meaningful sequence, uh, to use various illustrative examples, so, so new techniques of engagement uh, and examples to address different different learning styles. Just kind of learning how others learn and how to teach that. I really appreciated uh, the feedback and constructive criticism that this, this course offered and was able to reflect on the lessons that I taught and then to improve them for when I taught them in my classroom. So looking at them listening to the instructors and and how they they perceive them and then taking that constructive feedback interpretive this is the first course I took in the PIDP so it was my first introduction uh, to what I was getting into uh, they created a really comfortable teaching environment uh, it's helped me to open up and, and show some real growth this also built my confidence in front of others uh, I remember I remember it being daunting at first, you know, presenting in front of other instructors, uh, but, but this nerve soon, soon, soon went away after I had, had a couple of lessons or, and met with my group and seen a couple other instructors uh, or other learners putting on their, their presentations. I realized that it was a great environment to, to practice in. I saw the power of icebreakers, not only to relax the classroom, but this is also it's a valuable tool to gauge where where your learners are starting from and then to help build better lessons based on individuals needs and previous experience uh, with bloom's taxonomy i was able to see in higher forms when educating like analyzing and evaluating concepts processes procedures and principles rather than just kind of remembering facts which i kind of seen growing up learning just this is what it is learn it, pass the test. This was more deep conscious learning that I was getting into. Decisional. Uh, going forward, I feel a much more rounded instructor uh, when it comes to lesson plans and instructional delivery. I have much more confidence talking with other instructors about lessons and students. Uh, the vocabulary that I discovered has really helped uh, me to take me from a cook 
in my previous or a chef in my previous field to feeling more like an instructor. Using Bloom's taxonomy when designing educational training and learning processes, I will be doing this a lot more. Uh, and when I'm going into a lesson, I seem to be naturally now going over bops in my head just to make sure that the lesson has good structure and a good finish, more impact. And also I really enjoy how this has grown my network of instructors. PIDP 3230, the evaluation of learning. The objectives here were assessment and evaluation terminology and concepts, new approaches to evaluation and assessment, ethical issues in assessment and evaluation like late assignments, tardy. I worked on knowledge assessment instruments for the first time as well as uh, really breaking down rubrics, rating guides, and checklists on informal assessment strategies for the first time uh, and then with that curriculum alignment and evaluation strategies. Reflecting, uh, looking back at, at my previous approach to evaluation, it, it seemed pretty basic compared to the tools that I learned in this course. Uh, building evaluation plans, assessment instru instruments gave me a better understanding of the importance when focusing on the information that I would be grading the students on. I primarily used guidelines laid out for me by the ITA. They had given me acquired lessons and I based students' performance on, on their rubrics. So doing my own gave me a much better understanding. I didn't see it as, as thoughtful and reflective as it should be uh, or how I should approach late assignments. Students in my trade have a tendency to wait till the last minute for assignments. We work in an environment that demands results quickly. When orders are coming in and you are engaged in service, uh, so giving them long timelines to work on assignments kind of set them up for putting it off. This has kind of affected the way that I approach my assignments and how when I give them out. This was my first time building an authentic assessment instrument. I've used them when doing practical exams for the ITA based on standardized forms, uh, but creating one myself was pretty eye-opening. Learning their best practices gave me more appreciation when looking at ITAs and how they've been developed and how to develop my own. Interpretive, I think this class was the one that challenged me the most. And I also gained a lot of useful information when evaluating students. I felt it was the most challenging and it took the longest for me to complete because the tools that I created were foreign to me and I wanted to show validity and reliability when using them. If I want to evaluate and assess students properly, I have the tools in place to create reputable documents to support my decisions. Uh, the tools I learned here helped me to be a much better instructor, uh, with less holes in my armor when students uh, question grades and a better understanding when I assign them. The lessons I give have a lot more clarity and alignment based on expectations of the course and the information that will be evaluated based on the understanding I gained working on the assignments in this course. Also finding tools like Edpuzzle will also give me more resources that can help me to focus on important information that will help my students in class and also free up more class time for discussion. Decisional. So right now I'm currently working with my chair of culinary arts to develop a culinary arts diploma. I'm confident the skills I learned in the evaluation of learning are going to be put to the test when developing this curriculum. We're taking our courses that we have now, breaking them down and assigning them credits. We want to dissect the lessons and create a program that goes beyond the ITA's path and make it more approachable to a wider group of learners. The knowledge I gained in building different types of assessment and evaluation going to be essential when creating a diploma with courses that are reliable and valid. I'm happy that I've created templates that I feel will be able to plug in to the courses, adapting them for the key points of information that we're going to be teaching in this diploma. For PIDP 3240, Media Enhanced Learning. Uh, objectives here, uh, application of media related concepts, as well as Creative Commons guidelines, and copyright law, 
looked at trends and issues in technology and tools. I also worked with a range of instructional technology tools like blogging, Twitter, Zoom, vlogging, and then video lesson creation and editing. I also looked at how to best select instructional media for assisting in my classroom. Reflection. This was the last course I took before my capstone and probably the most useful during the pandemic. Uh, I used Twitter for the first time in probably six years. It was a great way to interact with my class. I'm looking for other ways to use it, uh, but that was a great, great tool. I spent a lot of my downtime over the pandemic watching cooking vlogs on YouTube, uh, preparing for what our classes might look like going forward. So this was a great opportunity for me to use what I was learning from those videos and put it to practice. I've always been wary of too much technology in the classroom. Uh, watching instructors falling apart because videos wouldn't load and programs were not working as they had planned. Seeing that dead space of technology were failing, so the students just waiting. Uh, having a backup plan was always something I think of, but. Now that I've got an understanding of technology, I think I can use it better and set myself up for success. So also, this program gave me a set of skills that I knew other instructors uh, would pass on to me that are needed in our involving classrooms. The other instructors that I work with, they're not interested in, in learning these tools as much because of their age. Uh, they're at a close proximity to retirement, so this is a good task for them to put on to me. Interpretive uh, was definitely a new skill, learning to create video lessons and editing them to engage and be valuable, uh, but a skill I'm interested in and, and wanted to learn. It made it one of the more exciting classes for me and I really enjoyed taking it. Uh, I'm taking the lessons from this class and building on those skills using friends in my network. Uh, they're, they're a lot more polished in, in film editing and, and filming that it's growing my media library for myself and, and for the culinary department. I know that videos and animations like Powtoons are a great way to engage with students and focus on key areas of learning. The ability for them to watch them as many times as needed to absorb the information is amazing. And also, putting them onto my Moodle course allows students to watch them at home before the class or, or during a class to fully explain my expectations this also allows me to do more lessons that are uh, available to watch and giving us more time for discussion and practice instead of setting up the same lessons over and over again for each class. Decisional. Uh, I feel like I'm very lucky that, that my class has been one of the few that is allowed to, to continue with face-to-face -face instruction, uh, but because of social distancing, the tools I learned from this course will keep our classroom up to date with other institutions. Our classroom has been also fitted with, with screens, large screens and cameras, uh, allowing me to use the media tools I developed in this course uh, to further our, our uh, department. Uh, I've strengthened my worth with my peers by having these skills and made our department kind of shine with, with the instructional cooking videos that I've been able to create. Uh, they've been viewed by other departments as well as our community and I've seen a great amount of, of feedback for those. And, also great to, to get a pat on the back by other people saying that they watch my video and change the change the way that they cook. I know with these tools I have opened up doors uh, for the culinary arts department that will go into the future and I'm glad to be one of the faces that are teaching a much bigger audience than just my cohort for the semester. PIDP 3250 Instructional Strategies. Uh, the objectives here learned about instructional strategies as well as instructional techniques. Uh, learned about how students are all different and how they are motivated and learn uh, where they are in the spectrum too, uh, uh, introvert to extrovert, and how that can even change from day to day. Uh, critical, creative, metacognition thinking skills and techniques to help adults learn was kind of one of the major things I got, uh, the different techniques. Reflective, 
Uh, I was glad I took this course as a blended model. Uh, so there was five days in classroom and then the remaining was done uh, by ourselves online or, or in uh, working with others online. Uh, I really enjoyed the way that we were able to interact in the classroom and work in, in groups and meet uh, because after I, rem I remember there was there was a forum that we all had to write about a different instru instructional strategy. I think I picked uh, gaming in classrooms and then create a discussion uh, field that that was more engaging having worked together in the classroom and met uh, helped helped have more engaging discussion in our forum. This was one of my first courses uh, that I took so I took this one after the instructional skills workshop and so I was introduced to a lot of things in the PIDP like uh, reflective writing and blogging blogging took me a little while. I wasn't too happy with my first attempt, uh, the, kind of the flow and how user-friendly it was, uh, so I ended up having to start from scratch uh, to get it from, to a place that I was happy with. Haven't done much blogging since, uh, but I see it as a valuable tool. Uh, this was also the first class making an instructional video, which I did on Yoki, a valuable tool. I still use it a lot in my classroom. Interpretive. Uh, with the growing amounts of stimulation that I see students have at their fingertips, uh, this class introduced me to a lot of techniques and strategies to, to engage and motivate students. And if students have cell phones, I can find ways to get them to search or use or, or learn uh, or other ways as well. Uh, this was, I think this was the most exciting course, uh, learning and using different instructional strategies and te techniques uh, really helped me with how I approach lessons uh, gave me a lot of tools in my belt to engage in and motivate students. <clears throat> I gained a stronger foundation in the need for, for genuine motivation to teach and how students aren't motivated the same. I also learned uh, to be more conscious of students as individual learners uh, requiring different approaches as opposed to teaching information to a set audience. Decisional in my classroom now, I'm constantly seeking new ways for motivational engagement, uh, reaching more students with a stronger connection through uh, conscious learning opportunities. Uh, with the information in this course, I'm able to look at students and see where they are in the spectrum of introverts to extroverts, and how to teach them in ways that, that work best for them. I feel like I'm extrovert, or sorry, an introvert in an extroverted world. Uh, I'm happy to work alone and it's more calming for me in, in my head, uh, but I have to lecture in front of uh, large groups of students, uh, put on events in, in front of, uh, and in public speak in front of a lot of people. Uh, it, it's kind of a big production. Uh, it, it gives me a rush and it, it's exciting, but it definitely drains me and I need to be uh, have a lot of downtime after I put on events like that. And I need to, as well, I, I find talking to students about that, uh, I think it, it helps them as well. I still like to go through the student engagement techniques handbook that, that, we, uh, that I purchased for taking this course and look for new ways of approaching lessons that I teach. Uh, it's become a really valuable resource. I uh, enjoy having that one around. I don't think I'm going to continue blogging, but learning about creating games and videos from this class is uh, something that I still do regularly and am creating my library. Last one, PIDP 3260, Professional Practice. Uh, the objectives of this course were effective instruction, uh, instructor competencies, we talked about assessment and evaluation of instruction. A course or a program evaluation was a heavy topic. Ethical dilemmas was a heavy topic. Uh, professionalism, uh, career management, and a big one, reflective practices. Reflective. Uh, this course, I remember having some challenging assignments, uh, like the work we did on dilemmas and Kidder's nine steps. Uh, I'm glad I have some valuable tools to use when dealing with dilemmas now and, and coming up with solutions that I can have confidence in. This class was where I started to get much better at blogging 
uh, which was a valuable tool to help me learn and write about program evaluations, professional development plans, uh, as well as social media and maintaining professionalism. I found blogging was a great tool when it came to analyzing information and the skill for, skill for teacher chapters and then journaling about it. It was, it was a cool way of learning that I hadn't done before. Um, in this class I created my first picto chart too on the importance of peer reviews and how they help with uh, course development and improving teaching. I created a formative feedback document that I was really happy with. I use it now too at the, the midpoint of, of my semester uh, to help gauge students' reactions to the course so far and looking at the things that they want to learn before the end of the semester. Interpretive. This course taught me that in today's classroom, uh, the possibility of one teacher connecting with all the students in the class, uh, full of diversity, racial traditions, and, and personalities, uh, that we, we need to have a diverse group of teachers that communicate well, uh, have different racial identities and strengths. Uh, that way, more students are, in, are engaged during class time. So a melting pot of teachers will help a melting pot of students. This course helped me see that the classroom I teach in is not the same uh, as the one I intended in the early 2000s. Uh, the explosion of, of online learning and social media has changed the traditional college teaching that I remember from when I took the same course and I think I graduated 2005. I find that I gained a better understanding of evaluations and how the importance of not only giving evaluations uh, but the commitment to consistently or constantly be reflecting on the information that is being expressed and how it might be received. Decisional. I'm definitely going to use the student feedback instrument that I created in this course going forward. It has helped me get a, a better feedback at the end of the course by my students. And that, that review uh, is, is brought up when my contract is being renewed. So having the, the feedback instrument in the middle really helps me to make sure that the students are getting what they expect and learning what they need to by the end of the course. I know that having Kidlers or Kidder's nine-step decision process uh, when dealing with dilemmas is going to come in handy going forward. It's nice to have that to be able to go through the dilemmas that will come down my pathway, I'm sure. Uh, because of this course, I feel like I see greater value in collaborating with my peers uh, to help improve my lessons. And 3260 helped me realize how I have to be constantly trying to improve my teaching and building confidence and evaluation and reflection will help me to achieve this. Uh, I know that students invest enormous significance in my evaluation of their work and I need to respect that and take that seriously.